is Jess dangerous? I don't think Jess is dangerous. Wrong. Whoa. You've clearly been playing weak source chess. I'm taking over. Ahem. Hi, I'm renowned chess master Limp Salad. My elo is like five digits, and I owe it all to studying the best chess game of all time. Rook B1, Rook B1, make a move that makes no sense. No, the best chess game of all time. This story is really either the most grueling battle of inches between absolute masters of the game with the hopes of an entire social system behind them using supernatural powers to destabilize their opponents, or the most petty fling-flanging of two people who just really wanted the shiny trophy. And today I'm going to share their story. Let's meet the contestants. In the blue corner, we have Victor Korchnoi, well-established chess grandmaster. Won the USSR championship four times, and all around, just a real chess stud. In 1976, he's finally had enough of the almighty union and tactically dips out into Switzerland. In response, the USSR basically bully him into not playing chess for a while, all up until they need him to come back onto the global scene to make their new champion not look like weak sores. So in the red corner, we have Anatoly Karpov. At 27 years old, he's the young hope of the Soviets. Now, Karpov is by no means weak source. At this time, he's the current chess world champion, after a admittedly pretty spicy previous competition. See, Karpov and Korchnoi versed in what was essentially the semi-finals for the privilege of fighting the previous champ, Bobby Fischer. And Karpov claimed the win that day, ready to fight Fischer, and then Fischer basically just dipped. So Karpov was crowned world champion, but without a fight and thus why the Soviets needed to bring back Korchnoi into the world scene. Look, our young champ bet Korchnoi, look how kick-ass and attractive he is, much like our communist union. So we have a Soviet defector who's a master of the game but has never quite claimed the crown, versus the new hotness of the USSR looking to legitimize his reign as champion in the grudge match of the century, all with the aforementioned union looking on expectantly. But let's add in the weird shit. Let's set the stage. It's 1978, a simpler time, watching Mork and Mindy on TV, Grease in cinemas. The Bee Gees are giving our ears the open kiss that is staying alive. And underneath all of this, of course, is the minor concern of uh, the, the Cold War and global annihilation. It's still pretty hot at this time, so both sides were looking for any advantage over the other. Economic, military, even going into the weird stuff. Okay, yes, somehow this is actually all relevant to explaining this chess game. One area of focus was the paranormal and the supernatural, remote viewing, incepting ideas, killing someone with a thought, brainwashing, and manipulation. Actually, the US projects for this have some of the best names that I've ever seen. Stargate, Gondola Wish, Sunstreak, Grill Flame. But it's that last one on that list that we're gonna focus on today, brainwashing and manipulation. What if someone could sit there, totally unassumingly, and push you into doing things you didn't want to do? Well, why not give it a try to help our new chess champion beat that horrible, horrible defector man? So the USSR got to work. The matches begin. The tournament already started on a bit of fun, so the USSR were basically swinging their dick around, saying that Korchnoi shouldn't be able to participate since he officially didn't have a country to represent. But old mate Korchnoi wasn't going down without a fight, and managed to stay in the tournament. He even spanked a lot of high-profile players to get into the finals against, yes, the new hotness himself, Anatoly Karpov. This, the finals, is when it really all starts going down. See, in Karpov's entourage, there was this guy called Zukar, the psychic parapsychologist. Officially, he was there to help Karpov's mental health, help him sleep better, all that sort of stuff. But he would just stare unblinkingly at Korchnoi as the game went on. And understandably, Korchnoi found himself feeling more and more uncomfortable. Like Zukar, the Magnificent, was sitting there mentally screaming at him. You are a traitor of the Soviet people. You should stop uh, fight against Karpov. You should stop. You, you must not... Uh, fight against him, you must lose. But Korchnoi had some tricks of his own. It started quietly. According to Korchnoi, one of Karpov's favorite activities while playing chess is to sit at the table and look at his opponents dead in the eye. 
So Korchnoi pulls out a, gun. a pair of dark reflective sunglasses and hits him with that reverse Uno card. Now Karpov is the one feeling unsettled, with his opponent dressed like Cool Guy Sunman across the table. So it's time for Karpov to clap back. During the second game, Karpov's team bring him a blueberry yogurt. Now if there was feathers on Korchnoi, they would most certainly be quite ruffled. This yogurt just comes out of nowhere, he doesn't ask for it, and yet the yogurt is delivered, and then he suddenly seems to play so much faster. So Korchnoi accused his opponents of sending secret messages in the yogurt, or that the yogurt was, I kid you not, full of steroids. And this is where it gets real petty for a while. So Korchnoi complained that Karpov was also doing some weird stuff during these games. He'd start rocking in his chair. How absurd! So Korchnoi would just leave the table until he had to come back to make a move. At the start of the eighth game, Karpov just refused to shake Korchnoi's hand. And this ended up being the first game that didn't end in a draw, with Karpov claiming the win. So it's now that Korchnoi decided to bring in some help of his own. If Zuka, the Magnificent, was slowing him down, he'd get someone else to pick him back up. So he brings in his own psychologist by the much more mundane moniker of Vladimir Bergener. However, this didn't seem to work too well, with Korchnoi going on to be three losers and only one win by the end of game 16. For context, the first person to six wins becomes the champ. It's chess grandmasters, they, they tie most of the games. So we get to game 17. Korchnoi is halfway lost, and Zuka, the Magnificent, was still doing a number on him. So Korchnoi demanded that the first six rows of the conference hall be totally cleared of people. Zuka just wiggled on back to the seventh row, and the staring continued. Okay, it's time to bring out the big guns. Game 18, Korchnoi kicks his Vlad to the curb and replaces him with two quote, Harvard educated yogi. And here's what happens, they roll up bright orange robes and start asserting dominance in the chess hall in the lotus position. Well, this sends Zuka the Magnificent running out and he's not seen for the rest of the championship. Now there may have been a good reason why he dipped so fast, it turns out the yogis had previously tried to assassinate an Indian diplomat and would shortly be kicked out of the country. Uh, but magical powers or no, the plan had worked, and Zuka was gone. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as Zuka was gone, Korchnoi starts winning again, claiming game 21 and fighting on to be tied with Karpov by the 31st game, each on 5 points. So it all comes down to who can claim the next win. Whoever can win first will be crowned the world champion of chess. Will it be the USSR golden boy? Can he hold on to his throne? Or will it be a newly revived defector to finally make his claim at the top of the chess world? Well, I'll let Levy take over the end of the final game. Rook to b7 by Black and Korchnoi didn't even wait for a move from Karpov. He simply resigned and Anatoly Karpov won the 1978 World Chess Championship. Was there weird psychic hot nonsense at play? Was it all just two stressed champions freaking out that the USSR might just kill them if they lose? Don't ask me, I'm just a simple salad. But if there's anything to take away from it all, it's that psychic powers are definitely the fastest way to boost your elo. Now, I must away to find my own Zuka the Magnificent. Lamp salad. Yummy, yummy.